I'll be honest, I didn't originally want to see this movie. All the trailers made it look boring. Then the reviews came out and they were pretty bad. So I decided to go and see it for myself. And all I have to say is, wow. People have kind of got this track record where every single film seems to be a copy and paste of another one. It's the Marvel formula. They don't have anything new. They just copy and paste characters from one place into another place. And all the third movies now seem to be team up movies. This movie actually felt like a movie. It didn't feel like it was a copy and paste of anything else. There is similar stuff to it, yes. But it didn't really feel like a Marvel movie. It felt more like Dune in tone. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty strange. The story itself is about gods and monsters fighting, which I don't know about you, but that's pretty epic for me. Now, if they showed stuff like that in the trailer, I would have ran to see this movie. This actually had the most mature relationship in any of the Marvel movies. It didn't seem forced, it didn't seem clunky. It actually felt like two people in a relationship. It felt grounded and it felt what it needed to be, which I love. It didn't really need the kiss at the end. That felt a little bit forced. But aside from that, it, it was great, you know? Some of the Eternals were getting together and they needed one of the other ones to come. But of course, that one had a family and he wanted to stay with his family to protect them. But then the partner came in and reassured him that going with his family was the right thing to do. And wow, developed tape on two characters. All the different characters, they're not really forced to be funny. They're not really doing that kind of Marvel humor where it's like, ha ha ha, joke, 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 joke. There is bits of that with one human character, Kingo. He's a Bollywood star and he decides to take his cameraman with him as the Eternals all come together to stop the deviants from destroying the world and his cameraman's just he's so human they're gods compared to him they're taking explosions he's just there recording and like hiding it's so amusing and i loved as well was the fact that he had so many different cameras and people were getting pissed off at him and smashing the cameras and like a few scenes later he'll just have a different smaller camera it was just hilarious I really, really like that. Focus was actually on Icarus and Cersei. I expected it to be more about Ajax and Fina because Selma Hayek and Angelina Jolie are the biggest stars in this movie. And if we're going by the trailers, they were supposed to be front and center throughout the whole thing. But it wasn't really their story. It was more about Cersei enjoying day-to-day -day human life even to attack her, they were supposed to be extinct 5,000 years ago. And because they're not, Cersei and Sprite, who live together, decide they need to find the rest to take down the de Deviants once and for all. Straight from the get-go, right? Icarus comes, save the day, right? Okay. But as soon as they go try to track down the next Eternal, something surprising happens because they're dead. He sets the tone of the movie because it's not, as I said, it's not like a normal Marvel film where you like have the superhero rising, then you have them defeated and then they rise again at the end. No. Throughout this, it's kind of a constant battle. There are quite a few flashbacks which bothered me at first, but the further you get into the movie the more it makes sense because the flashbacks are giving you plot points that will come up later in the rest of the film and of course you don't want to be watching half the film that takes place in the past and then watching the other bit of the film takes part in the present so i appreciate the way they actually segregated them in certain scenes one was just a some a character thinking back to the past and that was that was the end of the flashback that was really clever the one thing i don't get is because is the eternals are supposed to be these perfect beings right and one of them is death whilst i get they want to include people i don't quite understand that now i know a lot of the eternals were gender swapped and stuff like that but as i haven't read the comics it didn't really impact me that much it just didn't make a whole lot of sense having one character who needed to talk to everyone with sign language whereas everyone else was talking normally it's nice to have that bit of inclusion but at the same time you could have a bl blind guy in there that as well it just didn't really make a whole lot of sense especially when it reveals their actual origin which is they were created so they weren't they weren't born like everybody else they were created for a purpose right and for some reason she got created deaf but everyone instantly knows how to do all the sign language and talk to her okay okay it's a bit on the nose a bit on the nose but it didn't ruin the movie for me there was also one that was trapped in a little girl's body quite interesting because if you've seen something like interview of a vampire you know the kind of effect that could have on someone because she's living for 5,000 years and at no point has she aged whatsoever. So she can't have a human relationship with anyone like the rest of them can. Which actually brought quite an interesting perspective to the film as well. I was expecting Kit Harrigan to have a bigger role, being that he was getting this big push. But he didn't. He was in the beginning of it and he appears towards the end. But aside from that, we don't really see much of him. My favourite Eternal was Gilgamesh. He was just 
stacked. It was essentially golden, like gauntlet, like a power gauntlet, and he just punched things really hard. And he was in charge of looking after Angelina Jolie's character because she was going a bit nutty. So they kind of segregated themselves from the rest of the Eternals. I'm going to spoil a few things now. It's revealed halfway through that the Eternals were sent to Earth to prepare it to get destroyed so that a new celestial could be born. And they have done this thousands and thousands of times before throughout many different planets, all to create these celestials. And every single time the Eternals will have their mind wiped and they'll start fresh again. But they decide that enough is enough and they're going to try and take out Celestial. Originally, it's set up to be the Eternals fighting the Deviants. Which is cool, which is cool. You've got two, two godlike creatures that are the apex predator in the world, right? Then they put the cherry on the cake by having a celestial being being the main villain. I love celestials, right? They look, they look cool. Every single time they've appeared in the comics, it's giving me goosebumps because they are just so powerful. You can do them. Like, if you threw Thanos at it, Right? He couldn't do anything. He could he could use the infinity gauntlet with all the stones in it, and it wouldn't do anything to a celestial. That's how powerful these things are. And even though this, the Eternals are essentially gods, they're not a celestial being. It's like being the god of the gods. Like in Greek mythology, you have Zeus, right? You don't mess with Zeus, right? He is in charge. That is what the celestial is. You do not mess with them because they are in charge. Everybody else needs to follow suit. Otherwise, that's it. They're done. They're done. It was interesting they decided to set this in present day MCU as opposed to in the past. It did hurt the movie a little bit because you have another world ending threat and nobody's around for it. There's no other Marvel characters in this film whatsoever. It doesn't feel like they're connected. Now it's good because they've referenced some of them, but at this point, being that they've taken on Thanos, they've traveled to different planets and stuff like that. It's a bit weird that nobody would actually be interested in saving the world. Granted, the Eternals are going to know stuff that they aren't, but we've got Doctor Strange and he, he knows a lot. So it's, it's a bit weird that they wouldn't have that kind of insight to kind of team up with them. They joke like joining one of them joining the Avengers and being the leader and stuff like that, which is nice. But it also makes you think that the MCU is starting to get a bit too big. You can have all these world ending threats, but if you've got 50 heroes on one planet and the rest of them aren't doing anything, it feels a bit weird. Now, I will take that because this movie has a lot of strengths to it. It doesn't need the rest of the MCU. It's its own movie. It's its own thing. And for me, that's the best part of this movie. It doesn't need to be connected to anything else. It's a very much standalone movie. Shock that Marvel have actually done this. Because every single movie they put out it seems to need to be this interconnected thing with all this nonsense going on, right? But no, this one you can just watch without any knowledge whatsoever. Even the post credit scenes. The yes, they were sequel baiting, but they weren't, re they weren't references to the rest of the MCU. It was just a bit more of this movie. It was setting up the sequel, which honestly, I actually hope this one gets a sequel because it deserves it. I had a great time watching this movie and I can't understand why so many people hate this movie. I do get that because it's not like the rest of the MCU, people are going to get rubbed the wrong way by it. And it's kind of got the Dune and Battle Angel Lita vibe with it, where it's targeted to a very specific audience. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not one of those kid-friendly movies that everyone is going to go to. If you were to take a kid to this movie, they would be bored. They would be bored out of their mind because there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of political nonsense. Really that much action. There are a few action scenes, they're not the focus of the movie. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. 